you uh, lost a spectacular <laughs> amount of your power in the last election, and a new YouGov poll uh, has come out which suggests that on the basis of that poll, the SNP would lose its current coalition majority in the next Holyrood election, and Nicola Sturgeon's authority to call a second independence referendum would have disappeared even further. That's not me saying it, that's The Guardian. That's basically your in-house paper, right? It then goes on to well, say... That, well, let me just finish. The new Gov poll then says that just four okay. out of ten Scots <laughs> approve of your record. So you can put a, a rosy picture on this, Ms Sturgeon, but it doesn't read very well. Well, look, I put the accurate picture on it. The, the next Holyrood election, of course, is three and a half years away. Uh, a poll at the weekend had us 17 points clear of our nearest rivals. We're polling at a higher rate now than we were a year after our win in 2007 or a year after our win in 2011. When I became SNP leader, we had six MPs in the House of Commons. Today, we've got 35 MPs in the House of Commons. So, look, the SNP is in a strong position. But I take nothing for granted. The responsibility of every leader is to make sure we're working hard to maintain and build trust of people across the country. That's why just a few weeks ago we set out a really ambitious programme of government across health and the economy mm -hmm. and education so that we are continuing to make the changes and take the decisions that keep Scotland moving forward. Yeah. So that's my responsibility and one that I relish. You're not the only leader, though, who did have a bit of a nightmare at that election. And you can't, you know, downplay the fact that losing a third of your seats must have been... Well, I don't know, how would you describe it? Disappointing? Yeah, of course, I regret every single seat that we lost. We lost some very good MPs. But, you know, all I'm trying to do is, is put it in some context. Uh, when I was the SNP leader, or became the SNP leader, the SNP had six MPs in the House of Commons. And we now have 35 MPs in the House of Commons. Uh, the 2015 general election, I think everybody accepts, it was in the immediate aftermath of the Scottish referendum. It was exceptional circumstances. We won all bar three seats across the country. It was unlikely that was ever going to be repeated. But to be in a position where we have 35 compared to six just three years ago is one that, you know, I, I'm sorry, I struggle to say is anything other than a very strong position. But, of course, we must keep moving forward. We must keep... We've been in office for 10 years now, and that puts big responsibilities on our shoulders to continue to take the action that makes public services and our economy yeah. well, in about, Scotland stronger, let's talk and that's about, what we're very focused on doing. OK, let's talk about public services. A lot of this is about your record. You've been in power long enough now for people to judge actually whether your record stacks up. Uh, the SNP set eight targets on the NHS. How many have you reached? Look, we set challenging targets on the NHS. We're not reaching all of those targets, um, but we deliberately many? set challenging targets so that we put pressure on ourselves. We're not, re we're, we're, we're not delivering those targets, but we are well, making progress you, towards have you delivered delivering on? those targets. Look, uh, I, think you, I think one is being delivered right now. The one, others so, are in the so, progress yeah, of Nicola, being delivered. But, right, but with respect, but, with respect, you set eight Piers, targets for the NHS. The health service in yeah. Scotland, obviously a massive importance to everyone who lives in Scotland. You set eight targets and you've hit one of them. You failed on seven of the eight. But we've... But, but we're making progress. We've toughened the targets. So when, when I, we came into office, I was health secretary. At that time, the waiting time target for uh, inpatient treatment in the health service was, I think, 18 weeks. We've taken that down now to 12, uh, and we are making progress towards delivering those targets. That's what we're doing. We're toughening the targets so that we're putting pressure on ourselves to go further. And if you look at our emergency departments right now, they are, by some considerable distance, the best-performing accident and emergency departments departments anywhere across the UK. So We've clarify, also taken okay, uh, decisions that no other then, government... Targets... Let me finish this point. Yeah. Let me... Go on. Oh, go on, after you. We're also taking decisions that no other government across the UK is taking. So we are uh, integrating health and social care because we recognise that in Scotland, like health services across the world, the rising demand from an ageing population means that we have to reform how we deliver health services. So Scotland is not unique here in facing these challenges, but we've put £3 billion more into the health service. We've got 12,000 more people working in yeah, it. I we're doing that, here's, here's difficult reforms to make it fit for the future. OK, here's a problem, I think, as I see it, which is... Yes, you're in power, 
that power was badly eroded at the last election. Lots of questions about your leadership, about the SNP <laughs> going forward and so on. And what I'm trying to establish, when you set targets then, you don't actually expect to achieve them because you've made them so hard they're unachievable? Or, yes, we do. Or you do expect no, to achieve but, them. But but how, I set how a do target we, that's easy. But how do we of judge course. you if when you don't meet... You seven, well, hang on, let me finish. I, I gave you time. Could you please give me time mm -hmm. to answer the question. How do we judge you? How do we judge your performance if when you fail to achieve seven of eight targets on something like the NHS, you simply say, well, we made them tougher, so it doesn't count. The challenges don't count. They're different challenges now. No, I think... No, I think you're misunderstanding me, Piers. I, 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 we should be judged against the target. So when people come to vote for us again at the next Scottish election, they look across our performance and they judge us against that. But, you know, the easiest thing in the world for any government to do is to set a target that's easy to meet. You know, that's not difficult to do.